Hello, welcome to Elementes. My name is Andrew Malasi, and today we're going to be talking about the verb gustar. And I put the title Rethinking Gustar because I know you've probably been taught and or studied this concept quite a bit, and I want to present to you a different way of looking at the verb gustar that will maybe help you unpack it a little bit more and understand what it actually is about. And uh, it's it's a concept that came up in the research some 45 years ago, I believe, the first time. And it's actually quite common, but my bet is that you might not have heard it before. So let's dive in. So first of all, you know that gustar is translated as, generally speaking, to like. And literally it means to please, right? It causes a little bit of a problem with English speakers because we use the verb to like as the common verb to express our preferences. Whereas to please it sometimes has sometimes it just sounds funny. The reason why to please is the verb that most closely reflects what gustar is out of like and please. It's because there's a different focus on who or what the subject is and who or what the object is. For example, if I say like, the, using the verb to like, we say I like the food. And so I am the subject. So I'm the focus. I'm the actor in the sentence. I perform the action of the verb. I like. Gustar and the verb to please function the same way. The food pleases me. Now we do have the same more or less idea that I uh, derive pleasure from the food or that I like the food. However, what is the focus of this sentence? Who or what is the subject? The food. So notice that in the verb like, I am the subject, whereas in gustar and to please, the food is the subject. It shifts the focus. That is the source of a lot of difficulty for students. And that's why I hear a lot of times people say, yo me gusta. They want to say, I, yo, and then just use the stock phrase, me gusta, as the word like. But in reality, you can never say that. So, you've got to say, me gusta all by itself, and not, yo me gusta, because yo is a subject. And the verb gustar doesn't take yo as a subject when we want to express what I like or prefer. So moving on, let's play a little bit of a thought game. And to help you reconceptualize gustar through the lens of English and not through the lens of the verb to like or to please, which can just be a little cumbersome, let's just look at uh, this game. And we're going to deal in hypotheticals here, so bear with me. So in English, we have the word like, and its opposite is dislike, right? Okay, what would be the opposite of gustar in Spanish using the same formula? And it's okay if it's not exactly equivalent to the opposite uh, in terms of meaning, but if we were to add a, a prefix to the verb gustar to make it its opposite, it would be disgustar, right? Now, real quick, I know um, if you're familiar with the meaning of this verb, it's not exactly equivalent to gustar and the opposite being disgustar, like, dislike. But it gets us there, again, gustar with the negative prefix, disgustar, okay? So just like the word like, we have opposite dislike. Gustar has an opposite in Spanish, disgustar. Okay, moving on. So disgustar and the verb disgust. Have you already picked up on that? We have the word disgust, which is very similar. Look, at, can you see that the D-I-S-G-U-S-T of disgust is the first seven letters of disgustar? Okay. The word disgustar looks like and actually could be translated, you know, loosely as disgust in English. Even though disgust has this idea of repulsion, in disgustar, you, if you look online, it might be more like annoying or, you know, dislike rather than this strong aversion to. Again, it's because they're similar and that's why we're doing this, not because of necessarily they're exactly the same. Interestingly, it's not only similar in the meaning as being a negative or a not preferring or even an aversion to, it's also it's very similar in the way it focuses on who or what is the subject and object. So let's check out how disgust works. Let's say there is the word dislike and disgust. You know, they're more or less the same. They both express a negative preference or I don't want the thing, right? I dislike it or it disgusts me, okay? Well, again, we have a similar scenario where dislike and disgust focus on different subjects and objects. What is the subject of I dislike it? I. So the focus is on me as the one who performs the action of the verb I dislike. The verb uh, disgust takes a different subject. It is the thing that does disgusting, is the act of disgusting. And it disgusts me. 
I'm not the subject. Did you notice that? It is the subject, and it causes a reaction in me, whereas I express my preference towards it in dislike. One more time. I dislike is an expressing of what I feel about it, and so it's I'm the actor and the subject. It disgusts. It is a thing that causes something in me. So it is the focus of the sentence, the subject, and I'm the object. Do you notice that now? The it is at the beginning of disgust, and it's at the end of the sentence in dislike. They switch places. Unsurprisingly, disgust behaves just like gustar and disgustar, perhaps because they share the same G-U-S-T root, and that might influence the use of the verb as well. So, what would be the opposite of disgust if it existed in English, right? So again, we're on a thought game here, we're talking hypotheticals. What would be the opposite of to disgust? Well, use, there it is, to gust. If we had the word to gust in the sense of the opposite of disgust, of course we have the idea of the wind blowing as a gust, or it, it can be gusting outside. But if we talk about the idea of the opposite of disgust, like the opposite of dislike is like, what would be the opposite of disgust? Gust. Again, yeah, we're making up a word. Sure. Bear with me. So, what would be to gust? Take a second. How would you use it? If we say something bad like, the food disgusts me, how would you say that you actually like the food? You would say what? The food gusts me. If you can understand how to disgust works, and if you can wrap your mind around the word we just invented, to gust, then you can understand gustar perfectly. Let me say that again. If you can make the equivalent between disgust and gust and how it works, it's the exact same way as gustar in Spanish, and then you've understood that as well. So, example, it disgusts me is something you, you might have heard or said before, and let's say it's more or less equivalent to me disgusta. It's not exactly, but whatever, okay? And let's say it gusts me. Well, that'd be me gusta. Does that make sense? Again, the may there is not the subject. I'm not the subject of this sentence, remember? The thing is the subject. I am the object. The thing causes a reaction in me. It disgusts me. The opposite being, it gusts me. So when you're saying me gusta, you're not saying, saying exactly I like. You're saying the thing gusts me. It causes something positive in me, which causes me to like it. Here's my big tip. Stop thinking to like when you think of gustar. That is what we use in English, let's be honest. If you really want to understand how it works, don't think to like. Instead, think to gust, okay? If we had the word to gust, that would be our translation of gustar, likely, and if it were common use, right? So just think about that. If the word to gust in the same way as disgust existed in English, then it would be very likely that's how we'd explain the word gustar in our Spanish classes, rather than saying, I like, kind of like saying, it pleases me, which is, again, awkward. But if we had to gust, if we had to gust as a verb, that's how we would explain it, and you would probably get it a little bit more quickly. So, again, one more time. Stop thinking me gusta equals I like, because it's, you know, that's what we say, and that's equivalent in its, uh, in its meaning and its use in reality, because those are the common ways of expressing your positive preference. But if you want to understand it, you're going to think instead, me gusta equals it gusts me, or the opposite of it disgusts me, because that's how it works. Again, this isn't the exact meaning. It's how it works. Also, keep in mind that there's a plural form that we can also use in both English and Spanish. And of course, both of them require a slight change. For example, me gustan, you see I highlighted the N, me gustan las frutas. And that would be like, fruits gust me, or the fruits gust me. Notice how whenever it's plural in English, we get rid of the S. Instead of saying gusts, we say the fruits gust me. Just like in Spanish, whenever it's plural, we've got to add an N on to indicate it's a plural. And it's not because, again, I'm the subject. It's because the fruits are the subject. You see that? So the fruits being plural influence the conjugation of the verb, which now requires the N. And that's another indication that we're not supposed to say, Yo me gusta, or yo me gustan las frutas. It's just not possible. Remember, you, I, we're not the subject. The thing is the subject. The thing or things that gust us are the subject. So we've got to use those as subjects, and we're going to be objects. 
which are like me, te, le, nos, os, and les. Remember? So if I say te gusta, so the te refers to you, but remember, you're not the subject. What would it be in English? Well, it gusts you, okay? So you're not, you're not going to say you like. If we're going to use gust, it's it gusts you. Are you the subject? No, it is the subject. Nos gusta la película. All right. Three, two, one. You got it? Nos gusta la película. The movie gusts us. So we're going to think, sometimes students think that nos is an abbreviation for nosotros. And that's also something that causes them to think or students to think, oh, it's the nosotros form. It's not. Remember, the gusta is relating to the, the, the película, so the film or the movie, gusts, and then us. Notice that us is different than we. We is a subject in English. We like. But in this case, the nos is referring to the object of us. So whenever we... Uh, whenever it's a plural first person subject, we use we, we like, we go. But if it's an object like it is here, we use us. The movie gusts us. They throw the ball to us. We're not the subject. We are the receivers of the action, so we're the indirect object here, us. Moving on, le gustan a ella sus clases. You got a guess? All right. Her classes gust her. Does that make sense? Her classes gust her. Her classes gust her. This is a little strange because in, in English we have her as a possessive and her as a direct, uh, indirect object. So the lay would be the ending her, the second her at the end of the sentence. And then the sus, for that's the possessive of classes, classes, would be the her before classes. So it kind of goes opposite. What about me gustan los carros? Me gustan los carros. Yeah, of course. The cars gust me. And again, I'm not the subject. I'm the one who is, who is reacting to the cars. So the cars cause something in me. The cars gust me. All right. So if you really want to know more, remember how I said at the beginning this technique is not something I came up with. It's been around for like 40-something years, 45 years. Um, if you want to read a really quick synopsis of this method in about a paragraph to two, you can read the first source there, Spanish-English Contrasts by Melvin Stanley Whitley. And I was able to find this on Google Books like right away. So maybe just Google that book and you can find what he says. And if you want to go back to the original source, it's not easy to find the book, but if you've got a library or, inter or interlibrary loan, you can find the book Communicating in Spanish by La Madrid, Bosco, and Bull in 1974. And as far as I know, and this is what Stanley Whitley said, Melvin Stanley Whitley says, is that the 1974 text is the original source of this method of teaching, which I learned along the way, but I didn't realize it was uh, attributed to this uh, trio of writers here. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation. I hope that it helped you unpack gustar a little bit more. So remember, if you want to understand gustar, remember, it's not equivalent to like. It's equivalent to gust or disgust. You're going to translate it as to like, but to understand how it functions, you've got to think, it gusts me, is what we're saying when we say me gusta. So, muchas gracias y hasta la próxima.